What's up everybody, Beltendo here, and today we're going to be talking about a Nintendo Switch game, but not just any game. What we're going to be talking about is my absolute favorite Switch game that I think is an overlooked winner. Now, everybody knows about this game, but I feel like not enough people actually give it a try because of its appearance, and I think you should. Because, for me, this was one of the best games released on the Nintendo Switch. It's fun, it is colorful, it's bright, the mechanics are great, and it's good for anyone of any age. Do you have an eight-year-old that's just starting out? Well, this is a great platformer. Are you an experienced game player? There's a lot for you, too. And the game we're talking about is A Hat in Time. So. This is one of my favorite games in 2019. It was actually my Switch game of the year. Absolutely love it. A little bit of history on the game is it was developed by a Danish company called Gears for Breakfast. And this game was actually a Kickstarter. And on this Kickstarter, it doubled its goals in the first two days of the Kickstarter. Now it was developed with Unreal Engine by Gears for Breakfast. And since it met its funding goal, it was released in 2017 for Mac and XOS, maybe on Steam as well. Uh, it didn't come to the Switch until 2019, of which I bought it almost immediately. I was really sad I didn't get in on the Kickstarter. You know, sometimes you miss them. Uh, so the basic plot of the game, Hat Girl, that's her name, Hat Girl. And you go from level to level, and at first you think Mustache Girl is your friend. But she's not. She very quickly reveals herself to be the villain of the game. Like, very, very early on. So I'm not ruining any plot point for you here. Now, this game is very, to me, reminiscent of Mario Sunshine, where you have um, a lot of platforming in different areas. But then they have time warps, which bring you to those galaxy-style... Uh, levels that you found in Mario Sunshine. Running across spinning blocks and, you know, jumping over rotating things and, you know, the rest of the area is just a void you can fall off into. A Hat in Time has a number of those, actually plenty of those. Some are really hard, some are really easy. There are potentially scary areas for smaller children. Uh, there's one where you have to hide from a ghost, which is great. So you get to use a little bit of stealth abilities. But the overall plot of the game is you are Hat Girl. And you can get different hats and different pins for your hats that do different things. But it's a really fun platformer that you're going to have a great time with. Uh, I recommend this game to everybody I talk to because I think it's just an amazing game. It's definitely something you, could, you should check out. A Hat in Time, Nintendo Switch, one of the most overlooked fun games on Nintendo Switch. You want a light-hearted platformer with a early 2000s vibe? This is the game for you. It's not overly nostalgic. It's polished really well, but it makes you feel like the platformers back in the early 2000s did. So, give it a try. I had in time. And now, I'm curious what Craig's game is. Craig and I were talking about this, and so we decided to work together because we're actually good friends. And so, um, Craig, what is your favorite overlooked game on Nintendo Switch? Hey everyone, I'm Craig with Out of Control Games. I've been wanting a true sequel to Banjo-Kazooie and Tooie for years, and Super Kiwi 64 is just that. While the main character might look like a certain bear owned by Microsoft, the gameplay is a different flavor of retro ice cream. It tastes just like cookies and cream to me, which is the best. It's a $3 game and takes about an hour to 100%. It's absolutely worth your time. The developer Cytro has their hands in a few 3D platformers on PC for some time now. Tori Saturn's their latest game, which you should check out as well. Think of it as a good 3D Sonic game. The original Kiwi 64 is also available for download for free on PC. Levels play out like micro levels of Super Mario 64 or Banjo Kazooie. This game leads hard into that inspiration and doesn't hold back, which is not a bad thing. 
You have different theme levels such as forest, beach, underworld, and desert. And you can tackle your roller credits after getting 40 gems, but it's worth getting all 48. Every level has 6 gems, 5 to find in the overworld, and 1 to collect after getting all the gears. There are 8 levels in total, and each has its own challenges and secrets to explore. The music in this game hits hard. It's an absolute throwback to Donkey Kong Country or 64 and parts Banjo-Kazooie. My favorite track, and hopefully you're listening to it now, is the Desert Theme Extended Cut. For me, it hits that Donkey Kong Country vibe, which I can't get enough of. The controls are simple. B jumps and hitting B or holding B in the air makes your character glide. And then the X button attacks as well as barrel rolls in the air and lets you stick to walls. Using this creates an opportunity to wall jump. You can also use the right trigger to dash on the ground and in the air, and the camera does feel a little wonky at times, but you can adjust that in the pause menu. Oh yeah, there's also some hidden ruins in each level you can input after getting all 48 gems to do some really cool things. $3 for an excellent game isn't much to ask for, and honestly I've wasted more money on bad coffee or poor bargain bin titles. This game is absolutely worth it in your hour or two it takes to complete it. I'm Greg with Out of Control Games, and thanks Billy for letting me share about a fantastic game. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the video. I appreciate it, and so does Craig at Out of Control Games. So if you could give us a like and a subscribe, maybe even drop a comment. We would appreciate it. Y'all have a great day.